So back in April last year, I made a video on how you can run the Homebridge integration on the iHost in order to integrate or expose your devices on the iHost to Apple devices, to Apple HomeKit. And actually a news came out that um, Sonoff is moving to a different version of the Homebridge, which is a different Docker image. And I'm not really sure how long the old one is going to be supported. But I guess if they commit to a new version, I think probably it is time to you know, switch over to this new version, which uh, I have just done a couple of days ago. So this is what I want to summarize in this video. I mean, the whole event was uh, very um, you know, painless. It took me probably like 15 minutes in order to uninstall the old image and install the new image and got, uh, go through the installation procedure. And uh, the one thing is that I'm definitely noticing since the old version is that for the old version, <clears throat> the, the Homebridge had a plugin uh, which allowed me to uh, sync all the Zigbee devices that were linked to the iHost to my Apple device. But with this new one, when I was looking through the plugins, I also found an EV link plugin. And to be honest, I'm not sure if this is something that I overlooked in the old version or it just became introduced in the new version. Maybe it existed in the old version as well. But if you see on my phone screen, you can see that I have access to um, a lot of the Wi-Fi devices as well. So these are coming through the EV link integration. And then if I go over to the climate controls where I have most of like, you know, sensors, temperature sensors, and then you can see some stuff like the today maximum. And uh, let's say there is one which is called the wind speed, uh, which is not really, you know, a temperature sensor, but I was playing around with these virtual sensors in a previous video, how I was able to uh, import uh, values from open weather map into like a virtual sensor, a temperature sensor, and they also come through, um, you know, through this integration. You see a couple of uh, sensors that are showing no response because I was playing around with a lot of different things and then, you know, some of them did work for some, but I, there, are, there have been a couple of uh, duplicates created, but you can see that I have like an outside temperature and that is actually, sorry, outside humidity, and that is coming from an online weather service, so it's not a physical sensor. Uh, but I have also like, you know, that wind speed, that's also, there is no wind sensor in Sonoff, but I've taken this information from um, Open Weather Map and those virtual sensors also came through. So anyway, it is working and uh, I thought I'm just going to cover it in uh, the video. I don't do a lot of Apple comments because to be honest, I'm not really using Apple and also my, you know, knowledge and how to use this is also fairly limited, but just to focus on this integration, how you set it up and how to configure it, it's fairly straightforward. I was able to do it, so if I could do it, you should be doing it too. And as I said, probably it's a good idea to think about migrating to this new Docker image, um, maybe in the near future. Okay, so I'm going to do all this live. I try to do, well, capture everything that I do. And I think the first thing that I need to do before I kill the existing um, Homebridge integration is probably I need to remove it from my home app. So I go to settings and I have this home hubs and bridges and this is the living room home bridge which uh, I need to delete and that would obviously remove all the devices because then hmm I'm seeing a lot of stuff here which definitely comes from that home bridge so maybe, well, it's not here anymore. Oh, it's gone. Okay. So yeah, these were the devices that I needed to remove. Okay. And now let's try to do this. Uh, so I'm going to go into the Docker images. And so the new one is called Homebridge slash Homebridge. And uh, the, uh, where is the old Homebridge? Uh, this one i'm going to uninstall this actually let me just go into more info and uh, stop it and probably even uninstall yeah we don't need them anymore actually let me change view so you can see the whole screen okay i think that's going to be better Okay, and now I'm just going to install the new Homebridge integration. Okay, don't show this again. And 
I guess it's going to take some time. Ah, this is something new. I haven't seen this before. So there is a progress indication here on the screen. So 15% and this blue shade starts to moving from the side. It just stopped. But I don't remember seeing this in previous versions. So that's probably one of the sort of like UI enhancements that was added recently. Okay, so this took roughly about five minutes, I think. And now we can run optional settings. Show advanced settings. Yeah, I don't think we can just leave it on the defaults. Okay, and then now it's running and we go to info. And yeah, everything looks okay. Logs, anything special in the logs? Uh, nothing. So let's open the UI and see what it does. I think it probably is going to take some time until the, uh, the service fully loads and starts up. Okay, <clears throat> so it took me a few times I uh, pressing refresh, but then actually the whole thing loaded. So let's get started. Username, mm, password authentication from the whole bitch web admin interface must be configured. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so I think I'm just going to do admin. Okay, and create an account. Congratulations, open dashboard. Um, we can save this and uh, that's it. So, status is running, Homebridge is up to date. Um, update available, so maybe we can run this update before we start configuring in um, on my Apple device. So this was a couple of minutes, but it says restart is required, so let's just do that. <coughs> and to be honest, if you have seen Homebridge, you probably are more familiar with this user interface than I do. But we should be able to figure this out. So everything is running, everything is up to date. Okay, so it looks like that we have to go here and search for EV Link. Homebridge EV Link. Pick this Homebridge EV Link, which is verified and not any of the others. And let's do the latest. Okay, I guess a couple of more minutes uh, to wait until this installs. Ah, it's already running the post install scripts. Okay, so now we can do this one. So this is actually the EV link uh, integration. So I just provided my user ID and password. And now we just need to restart. So let's see what this does. Okay, so if I go into my devices, then I can see all these devices. Wow, okay. So these are definitely all the ones that are in my EVLink application. So that's good. Uh, so what I did, I just had to wait a little bit, but once I've gone into accessories, now you can see that I have all the different sensors that uh, exist in my uh, EVLink application and it got nicely migrated over. So uh, the one thing I'm really missing is all the devices that is in my um, uh, EVLink, uh, sorry, in my iHost. So I have a couple of, uh, you know, present sensors, so person sensor, and also like this new button, uh, which I'm not really seeing here. So I think this integration is done the you know, the EV link, the, you know, the, the wired stuff, but I'm missing uh, the, the things that are directly linked to the iHost over Zigbee. But I think at this point we can also do, um, add all these devices to my, I, um, to my iPhone. Okay, so I'm back in my home screen and I just need to do plus and add accessory. And I just need to point this to QR code and it has recognized that this is a home uncertified accessory add anyway. I'm assuming that you just have to add anyway. And now it's adding to the home and we should have, well, we should see if, yeah, let's put everything into the living room. And this is a new home bridge. Let's just call it like that. I mean, you can give it a different name like iHost or something. Not that it really matters because uh, um, yep. 
okay we have some sensor names uh, door sensor okay uh, we might need to go through all of these manually so I think I'm just going to skip this one so for these contact sensors it's asking me to you know specify them what the name should be whether it should be in you know certain room what type of sensor that is so I think I'm just going to you know do a few fan fan okay that's going to take some time because I have all the devices that I ever owned uh, with um, um, you know with EV-Link so yeah okay I just selected to add oh okay so it says set up the accessory but anyway all of the things are here so now you can see well to be honest most of my stuff are on sort of like demo boards which are not powered on at the moment so I have the L2 which is actually in my room oops and I do can control it so it is an LED strip which is there anyway it works so I can turn this on and off and um, yeah it works without any issues so that's very cool and this POW is also connected because that's measuring the power consumption of the washing machine actually the uh, the dishwasher so that is on and it should be on all the time but then as I said most of the other devices are off so the integration is working it was very easy to add it to my home app on my iPhone so that should be it and then basically any new device that you add to this integration from now on will automatically appear in your home app okay actually the integration in the old home bridge was called the cube and out of this list i think this is the only one which is very you know similar to the evilink cube integration so i'm just going to download this and again take the latest version and hopefully that would allow me to sync all my iHost devices okay and actually this is the screen that I was looking for so now it has found the uh, the iHost.local and I'm going to ask for a script and sorry a token and I'm going to allow the access token and token obtained uh, show the devices in the log so if I go to the device list then um, yeah I have well I have all the devices that I created and uh, it looks like that oh yeah so I, I, I can see all these extra devices that I've created dynamically using uh, node red so like you know weather information that I get for a motor or open weather map or um, you know virtual sensors that I create by uh, calculating some values so that's a lot of additional devices Although I'm seeing some of my EV-Link devices as well, which to be honest, I'm going to unswitch because they are already coming through the EV-Link integration. So I don't need them and I don't need the lights either because those are, again, they are coming from uh, the EV-Link integration already. So really all, all I need is the sensors because the, the sensors, the Zigbee sensors, uh, all the virtually created sensors from Node-RED they are you know only connected to iHost so they don't exist in EV-Link so we should add them so save and again we just have to restart integration okay so now I'm seeing a lot of stuff in here which is probably as the the different plugins are trying to sync in all the various sensors and if I go into accessories it may take some time for all of these to show up but let me just go through if I see anything which is uh, familiar yeah door window sensor and all temperature sensor new temperature sensor person test sensor today max temperature today minimum temperature so this is all which uh, for example these today max minimum temperature is something that I created in the node red integration in iHost which is a very simple flow which reads open weather map so internet weather forecast and then it creates these values um, um, as virtual sensors in iHost and now they are syncing over to Apple so that should be very sweet and actually I realized that I made well I, I, I won't say I made a mistake but I didn't make a mistake so the reason I didn't see all I didn't see these iHost uh, sensors here in the device list 
because what I have connected to the iHost at the moment are mostly uh, you know temperature humidity sensors or contact sen sensors and they are up here in the uh, Apple home kit so now if I go here temperature I can see some of my you know virtual sensors like the today max the today minimum so those are here it's the same for humidity you can see that uh, I have uh, you know outside humidity and also test sensor you know some of the TH sensors TH elite but also this wind speed which is not really humidity but uh, there was no separate, um, you know, value for humidity. So I, I was sorry for wind speed. So I used a humidity entity and then represent the wind speed in it. I've explained that in a separate video and also the same for the security here. You can see all the, uh, the door and the window sensors. So, so this contact sensor and this door sensor is all connected to the, uh, I host, uh, using Zigbee and they came through without any issues. So everything is here and uh, yeah, now I can control them. So I switched on some of these devices. Now you can, you know, I can do CH Pro and um, you know, well, that, that turned off all, all the, uh, the inputs, but then uh, of course I can, you know, operate the separate, in, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the individual inputs as well. Yeah, I have the M5 connected as well. I plugged in a few devices so we can see how they work. So that was my short video of the new Homebridge Docker image on the iHost. If you haven't purchased an iHost and you might want to buy it for this particular integration, then you will find affiliated links in the video description below. But I think that should be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.